everyone, I'm Michelle Smith and welcome to my channel. I have a Dollar Tree DIY for you today. Today's crafting adventure, we're going to be making one of the 3D pumpkin wreaths from Dollar Tree. All of the materials needed to make this wreath come from Dollar Tree. Here is a list of the tools and materials I used to complete the project. For your convenience, I've also included a detailed list in the description box below. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. You're going to need one of the 3D wreath forms in the pumpkin from Dollar Tree. And then you're also going to need about five or six packages of this deco mesh tubing. Now at this time in the Dollar Tree, they have two different colors of orange. In their fall section, the orange is a little bit lighter, and then in the Halloween section, the orange is a little bit darker. Now, I got mine from the Halloween section because I liked the darker orange better. You're going to need some orange colored uh, pipe cleaners cut in half. And you're also going to need a piece of cardboard or a small piece of the foam board. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to extend the stem here on the pumpkin. So it just needs to be big enough, a piece of foam board or cardboard for you to extend the stem. So I'm just going to lay the pumpkin down and then I'm going to mark out where the current stem is with my pencil. And then just freehand, I'm going to go ahead and make this stem a little bit bigger. I want it to kind of curve to the side and then look like it's kind of broken off. Okay, something along those lines. You can play with it until you get it the way that you want. We are going to be attaching it and then covering it. Okay, so go ahead and figure out how you want your stem, and then you're going to want to go ahead and cut that out. Uh, you can use scissors if you want, but I find a utility knife or a good X-Acto knife works better. You tend to get cleaner lines. Go ahead and open your package of tubing. Now you want to be careful when you pull it out. This tangles very easily. And they have a little piece of plastic that's tied around there that has kept it separate. Go ahead and open that up. And then you want to be very careful and you want to unravel this all the way out to one long piece. And it does tangle very easily, so it's best to just slowly pull it out. If you get all the curly cues out now, it'll be much easier for you to work with. Okay, then once you've got it pulled out, you want to take the two ends and pull those together. Take one of your pipe cleaners, come down a good inch. Fold that over so that you can get this nice and tight. Pull that tight and twist. Take the ends, fold them back through your pipe cleaner again over to the other side and twist again. This is how it's going to be anchored so you want to make sure it does not come loose. Then you want to come and you want to anchor your pipe cleaner right here on this down dip. That way we can hide it when we put the stem on. Okay, 
Okay, so I pulled it out from the back. I'm going to bring it around to the front here. And then I'm going to go under this bar, over this bar, under this bar. And then you need to pull it all the way through. And I'm doing it double so that uh, I can go a little bit faster than doing it single. Okay, so I pulled it from the back around, went under, over, under. Now this is the outside bar. I'm going to wrap around that, come through, and then go over, under, over, under, over, under, pull all the way through. Okay. Now you don't want to pull too tight. You want it to be snug, but you don't want it to be too tight. If you pull too tight, it really thins down the deco mesh and then you have to go back and forth even more. So you don't want to pull too tight. You do want it to be snug. But if your deco mesh shrinks, you're pulling too tight, okay? Then when you get to the end here, go back behind and wrap around and come through. And then go back. So I'll go over, under, over, under, over, under. So I get to the end. Once I get a pass through, I pull it all the way through. If you try to go further than that, it gets all tangled up. Okay, and then when you get to the end, wrap it around, pull through, and then just go back, back and forth, weaving up and down. And you just have to be cautious, like I said, not to pull too tight. I'm going to go ahead and get some done, and then I will come back and show you my progress. Okay, so I have two packages of the Deco tubing on. I'm really liking how it's coming out. I wanted to show you how I start and stop the Deco mesh. So I've gone ahead and put my pipe cleaner on. I want the mess in the back, so I'm just going to come up from the back here on the bar that I'm going to stop it on. Pull it back and give it a twist. Okay. Then I'm going to take the two that I'm ending and pull it right into the same pipe cleaner and tie it down. Okay, so I have both ends of the deco mesh tubing tied together in the same place. I want to make sure that I keep all those nasty ends and everything in the back. Now if it slides down, it's okay, just push it back. So then you'll want to turn it upside down, otherwise if you try to work on it this way, it just keeps sliding down on you. And then just continue on um, with your tubing, weaving in and out. When you get down to the very end, or near the end, you'll notice that the tubing gets really twisted. At that point, you'll want to cut the end, and then they'll untwist, and then you can continue. Okay, you just need to make sure that when you come back that you hide that pipe cleaner. And that's why you do need orange, especially in the body, because you might be able to see just a little bit of that pipe cleaner. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and continue to get the base on. So I have my base done, and it took four packages of the deco tubing to complete the pumpkin. Now I pulled out another pack, so this is my fifth pack. I want to add a little bit more to the pumpkin. So 
So right where the bars are, I'm going to run a strip like this over each of the bars. So in the back here, you can see where I tied them with the orange. And um, you can't see them from the front. That's why you really need to use the orange in the body. Okay, so you want to go up to the very first bar and where it meets this bar. And you want to go ahead and pull that through and tie it off. And you also want to wrap it around that top bar and secure it to the top bar. Otherwise, when you pull it down, it will pull all the mesh down and you don't want that. Okay, so it's nice and secure. Once you've got that end down, you go ahead and pull it all the way down to the bottom here and wrap it around the bar down here. So I just pulled out a long piece to make it easier to work with and cut it. Okay, and then you just want to make sure that you don't pull it too tight. We are eventually going to tack it down a little bit with some hot glue to keep it in place. Okay, so where this bar meets, you tie it here. Then you want to bring it down. And then I looped it around both the outer bar and that inner bar. And I'm going to just come over to this next bar. Pull the piece through, wrap it around the outside bar, and pull it through on the opposite side. So it's nice and secure. It's not going to slide either way and it's going to pull on the outside bar and then follow that up and then do the same thing up here. Pull it through. Wrap it around the outside bar and then pull it through on the opposite side. that bar and then move over to this one. I'm going to wrap it around. Go over the top, back under. And then pull that one down and attach. And just keep doing that until you get all of those bars covered. Okay, so I have my little ribs on. I'm really happy about that. Um, I haven't tacked them down yet. I'm going to wait until I get a little bit further before I worry about that. Okay, so next you're going to want to go ahead and cut out your stem. And then this is optional. I did go ahead and paint it with some khaki paint. Once I attach the stem, I'm going to go back and wrap it with some jute cord. And just in case I miss anything, I don't want white showing through, so that's why I painted it khaki. But that's up to you if you want to do that step or not. So go ahead and set that aside to dry. So I wanted to make some tendrils for my pumpkin. So to do that, you're going to need some of the wire jute cord that you can pick up from the Dollar Tree. Now when you unwrap it, it does tend to be a bit of a mess at the end. This does like to unravel really quickly. So you'll want to go ahead and do a clean cut on your end. And then you're going to want to hit your end with a little bit of hot glue. You don't want it to come apart on you. 
just kind of put a drop on there and use the tip of my glue gun there to wrap it around that end. Okay, so then once you have your end down, pull out a nice piece. And then you're going to need a pencil or a dowel rod or a pin. And then go ahead and just grab the end. And you want to do a loose spiral. Okay, and then go ahead and pull out whatever you used. And that'll give you your tendril. Then I like to leave a space where I'm going to attach it. And then I'm going to do one down this side. Go ahead and cut the end. And then go ahead and add a dab of glue. And then just pull out your then this straight part here is where I'm going to attach it to the pumpkin, okay? So I'm going to make one more of these, so I have two. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and attach my stem. Now I want to hot glue my stem onto the front part here. So I'm going to use the hot glue and attach it to the back. Just want to make sure it's pushed down and in the right position. And again, this is just because in case anything shows through the twine or the jute, I want it to look, have a clean finish in the front. So you want to get that glued on nice and get let the glue completely set. Okay, once you have your uh, stem glued on, then go ahead and attach some jute cord. Just start at the bottom. Lay down a little bit of glue. Go ahead and lay in your jute cord. And you just want to go in and start wrapping. Lay down some glue every once in a while where you need to if it feels like it's slipping. And just do your best to get it covered as much as you can. So I have my stem on. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Now I've just been tacking down this tubing. Now all I'm doing is going down to the bottom and hitting it with a little bit of hot glue to get it started. And then anywhere where it rests on top of one, I've gone ahead and just gone in and added a little tiny dot of hot glue so that it will hold it in position. You don't need a lot, just a little. That way they won't slide around, okay? So go ahead and secure those down with just a little bit of hot glue. And then set it aside. Okay, so now we're gonna make the bow. You're gonna need a pipe cleaner. And then I'm going to do a double bow. So I'm going to be using um, this ribbon that I picked up this year from the Dollar Tree in their fall section. This is two and a half inch wired ribbon by nine feet. I thought that was really pretty. And then I'm also going to be using this one, which is the dark kind of green burlap. 
And again, this is in the fall section. It's two and a half inch wired edge ribbon at nine feet. Okay, so you're going to want to cut of the green one long piece at 26 inches, fold it in half and dovetail the ends. Then you're going to want to cut two pieces at 20 inches. And then in the leaf ribbon, you want to cut one long piece at 26 inches and dovetail the ends and fold it in half. You'll want one piece at 18 inches and then one piece at 7 inches. Okay, now these are all the pieces to our bow. The two pieces that are 26 inches that are dovetailed, those are our tails. Okay, so you want to start with the green ribbon. I'm going to bring it together in the back. You want it to overlap by about an inch. Pull it together. Like that. Hold it. Do the same thing to the other green ribbon. Overlap by about an inch. Put them together. And I double check. You want to make sure that they're the same size. So do whatever adjusting you need to. But you want to make sure that they cross over enough that they'll stay together. Okay, then you want to take the 18 inch piece of the leaf ribbon, go ahead and overlap that again by about an inch, push that down. Okay, now this one I want on the top, so I'm going to put this one on the bottom. So all the folded ends are facing up. Okay. Now on the back, go ahead and place down the leaf ribbon for the tails. Open it up, make sure that that crease is in the middle, and do the same thing with the green. Make sure the fold is right in the middle. So turn it over. So you should have your leaf two greens, the leaf tail, and the green tail. Now this small ribbon, I'm going to go ahead and make a circle and have it overlap again by about an inch. So it looks like that. I'm going to place that on top with the folded edge down. Okay. Then you're going to take your pipe cleaner and you're going to feed it through the hole. And you're going to take all those ribbons and you're going to scrunch them together in the back. Get them nice and tight. Pull that pipe cleaner really tight. And twist to secure. You want to do it a couple times because you don't want your bow to fall apart. You just want to go ahead and grab the back, hold on to those pipe cleaners, and then go ahead and kind of pull your tails down. And then pull the leaf tails down. If you have to twist it a little bit to get them to come down, just grab right up near the top, kind of pull it together and pull down. And then you can go in and fluff up your bow. Just going to open those. And then you're going to want to pull of the green one to the top and one to the bottom. Same thing on the other side. 
that the loops are separated. And then pull that leaf one over in the middle. Okay, so generally it looks like that. I will play with it more once I get it onto my wreath. So go ahead and set that aside. Now the Dollar Tree carries burlap leaves and they have two different sizes. They have this nice large size and then they also have this one. Now I thought the larger ones looked more like pumpkin leaves so I'm going to be using those. And I'm gonna use one in the orange, one in this kind of like Merlot color or red, and then two in the neutral colors. I really like these. They come with a nice strong wire. So we're going to use those to help attach it to the wreath. And so I'm going to kind of fan these out over the top. I'm going to put one here. Kind of one here. This one facing this way and the red one kind of on top. So it'll have that type of an effect. And I'm just going to use the wires and the hot glue to attach them. So now the wire isn't quite long enough to wrap around the stem. So I'm actually going to feed that wire down around the frame. So I just wrapped it around the frame. And then you just need to play with it until you get it to where it's laying the way that you want. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and attach my leaves that way. Just going to feed them down to the back and wrap it around. And you want to leave it however long you need to to have them come down as far as you want. We are going to be attaching the tendrils and then the bow will come up here too. So remember some of it is going to be hidden. Okay, so I have the leaves wired on. And now I'm going to take the flat part of the tendrils and I'm going to glue it to the back of the stem and then pull the tendrils forward. Okay, so where the flat part is, I'm gonna glue that down. Okay, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's thoroughly dry before we adjust anything. Okay, I am all done. I'm really happy with how it came out. I went ahead and attached my bow. I think it looks really cute. I really love the tendrils. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's craft. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up. It really does help out my channel. Thanks again for stopping by. It's always a pleasure to see you. I hope everyone in your family is staying happy, healthy, and strong. You have a great day and I will catch you next time.